Hallelujah. Yes, we just want to give glory to the name of the Lord. You are welcome. This is I Am Ministries International. Hallelujah. We just want to give glory to the name of the Lord for such a wonderful, wonderful evening. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We give glory to the name of the Lord. And we believe that God is going to speak to us this evening in Jesus' mighty name. Online church, you are so, so very, very much welcome with love. We welcome you, very happy to welcome you this evening in the name of Jesus. We welcome those in the diaspora, hallelujah, those in uh, Africa, Asia, Europe, United States, South America, Australia. You are all welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. We give glory to the name of the Lord. Before we begin, we would like to, you know, recognize the anointing. Yes, the anointing upon our vision bearer, our mom, prophetess Agnes Emmanuel Avako. We give glory to the name of the Lord, more especially for the way God is using her in this end time generation. Hallelujah. We thank God so much for the anointing and the grace in Jesus' mighty name. God is so faithful. God is so good. We are seeing great and mighty things. We are seeing marvelous things that the Lord is doing in our lives. Amen. And in the lives of the people out there. Our mom, mom prophetess. Agnes Emmanuel Avako sends her greetings. Amen. She's very busy. I think those who, of you who are on YouTube, hallelujah, you're seeing her almost everywhere. Amen. So we thank God, ma'am. We are honored and we are very humbled, yeah, to sit under your anointing. We also want to forget, we don't want to forget the man of God, the assistant pastor, Yam Ministries International, Pastor Robert Wamala. Amen. Pastor, we celebrate the grace upon your life. And we also want to like to thank God so very much for our grandmother, um, Prophetess Miriam Obina. Mom, we love you and we are humbled. We give glory to the name of the Lord for uh, our grandpa, uh, Bishop Paul Chiquim. We are so humbled and we thank God so very much for the anointing that is upon your life in Jesus' mighty name. And also in a special way, we don't want to forget to recognize the presence of God, the spirit of the living God. We honor you. We thank God so much for you. Yes, because without you, nothing would be taking place in, in this place. Hallelujah. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Just, you know, dedicate your life, dedicate your heart unto the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we want to thank you. Lord, we want to honor your name. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Can somebody just lift up their hearts? Lift up your spirit. Yes, in just this short moment, glorifying the name of the Lord. Tell him that, God, you are worthy. You are mighty, O oh God. You are awesome, O oh Jehovah Jireh. You are a fierce God. We thank you because, God, you are mighty, Lord, in power. Lord, Lord, we glorify your name. We bow down, Lord, and worship you, Lord. We bow down, Lord, and honor your name. We bow down, Lord, and magnify you. We bow down, Lord, and exalt your holy name. We bow down, Lord, oh God. We uphold your name up high, oh God. Behold and great name, oh my King. We thank you, Jehovah Jireh, oh my King. The Lord, oh my Father, behold. Lord, oh my Father, behold who created the earth, oh my King, and hanged it in space. How great and mighty, Lord, you are, oh my Father. Yes, the, oh, the floods respond, oh my King, to your voice, oh God. The storms respond unto you, oh God. You are mighty, Lord. We thank you, Father. Behold, they lift up their voices and glorify the name of the Lord. They say you are mighty, mighty, Lord. The animals Lord in the wilderness. Father glorify your name. The birds in the air. Yes acknowledge you as God oh my father. Lord we thank you oh my father. We glorify your name oh my king from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Father Lord behold we shall glorify your name. We magnify your holy name. O sunny de mukamoli wa man. O sunny de Jehovah. You are great oh my king. You are mighty. You are awesome. We thank you oh Lord. We welcome thy presence, oh my Father. Lord, oh my Father, you are mighty, Lord, in power. You are awesome, Lord, in glory, oh my King. We thank you, oh mighty Father, Lord. We magnify your name, the Lord, oh my King. You're more valuable, Lord, than diamonds. More, mighty Father, Lord, valuable than gold. You are more beautiful than diamonds, oh my King. We thank you, oh my Father. Lord, you are more, you are more expensive, oh my King, than, oh mighty Father, any expensive stone. Oh, no, my father, on earth for behold, they all belong unto you. Oh, you are worthy, Lord. 
We thank you, my Father. We thank you, Jehovah. We honor you, my King. The God seated amidst the seraphims. The God seated amidst the cherubims. You are great, oh my Father, and greatly to be praised. You are great and greatly to be honored. You are great and greatly to be exalted. We thank you, the unchangeable God. We glorify you, Lord, the glorious God. We thank you, my Father, Lord. In you, Lord, oh my Father, we have everything. You are God, our fulfillment. Oh God, the infallible God. Yes, so oh my Father, the infinite God. You are worthy, oh my King. You are God, oh my Father, all in all. You are God, our oxygen, Lord. We worship your name. You are God, our breath, oh my King. You are God, our life, oh my King. The great I am, you are holy. The great I am, you are holy, oh God. You are holy, you mighty, oh Jehovah. You are holy, you awesome, oh my King. You are holy, you great, oh my Father. Father, Lord, behold. Lord, we invite thy presence. We invite you, O my King, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord who inhabits the praise of his children. The Lord who is in habits, O my Father. The fellowship, O my King, of his children, O God. For behold, Jesus, Lord, you said, where two or three are gathered in your name, behold, there you shall be. Behold, Lord, we are gathered, Lord. We are more than two. We are more than three, O Lord. Lord, we thank you, O my King, as we gather, Lord, O my Father. Father, we thank you because you are with us, oh my King. What the Lord is your name, oh my Father. And Lord, we pray that you take control. Take control, Spirit of the living God. We call upon you, take control, Lord. Lord, oh my Father, our helper, our comforter. Lord, take control in the mighty name of Jesus. You are worthy, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We magnify your name. We thank you, Lord. We adore your name. We thank you, Lord. You are awesome. You are great, oh my King. You are awesome, God. Awesome, God. Worthy, God. Worthy, Lord. Yes, oh my Father, Lord. You are worthy. You are holy, oh God. Pure and holy, the righteous God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, we honor your name. We pray, oh my Father, that we may disappear. That, oh my Father, you may take your place in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray oh my Father, Lord, oh my Father, I stand, Lord, before the saints. I pray that every word that will proceed, Lord, from this lips, oh God. I pray, oh my Father, behold, may it cause an impact, oh Father, Lord. Lord, oh my Father, may it, oh God, bring a change, a transformation, an upliftment in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, oh my Father, Lord, that you speak through this vessel in the mighty name of Jesus. You are worthy, you are mighty, O God. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name, we are prayed. And let the church say, online church, hallelujah, just give glory to the name of the Lord. Tell him that, God, we thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name. You are holy, Lord. You are worthy and mighty. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name, hallelujah. Amen. We give glory to the name of the Lord today. We are going to look at a title, Managing the Times of Change managing the times of change hallelujah how to manage or how to manage change how to manage the times of change or yes how to manage the times of change amen uh we want to give glory to the name of the lord because believers life in itself is not static i just want to give you a, a, a story about me um, regarding change I've ever given it before I remember the time when we are transferring from Kampala from the city my late father was a, a civil servant so of course they were given transfers and it was our first time to be transferred out of you know the city and we were going to Fort Porto it was not an easy time Amen. So when I talk about change, I, I know what I'm talking about. Change is not easy. Change is one of the most feared things, amen, that, you know, human beings encounter. It is one of the most, most feared things. Most of the people don't want change. People usually want to stay in the place that they are. We always resist change. We resist it with every fiber of our being. We resist change. No one wants to change. Amen. We always love stability. People want to be stable. Amen. Or they want to remain the way they are most of the times. Amen. Change is so feared. People fear change. 
Amen. And you may say that, ah, Pastor, what do you mean? Me, I want change. You know, I want to get from this place and to another. Yes, well, that is good. But most of the times, maybe another example I can give is, you are given an assignment. You have an, assi an assignment and God lifts you up and says, no, I want you to be here. I want you to do this for me. Most of the cases, in most instances, believers, it is not easy. So time came when he was transferred and we were supposed to go to Fort Porto. Fort Porto is found in the western part of Uganda. Believers, it was not easy for all of us. Because remember, we had friends. This is the place we were born from, the place we grew up from. We went to school from at least to a certain, uh, a certain stage. Amen. It was a place, you know, a place of comfort. So when he uh, was transferred, for him, he went to Fort Port and he actually came back when he was so happy. Amen. Because he had already seen the place and he had a picture of the place. Now, as we were in the darkness, amen, we, we really resisted it. It was a very fierce time for us. Amen. It, it wasn't easy. I remember when we told our neighbors and our, and our friends and everybody was saying, what, you are going to Fort Porto, you, that village, are you going to manage? All sorts of things were said. Now, and they even made it worse. In my heart, you know, in my young heart, I wasn't very young, really. I was 18, a teenager. So in my heart, I was like, you know, should I tell my dad that, no, uh, let me go to my uncle's place at least. But I knew he could not let me. So the day came when we were traveling. Believers, we went crying. All of us went crying. Because we were wondering. You know, we were wondering what, the place that we were going to. And plus the report that we were given. It was, we went with a lot of imaginations. Amen. We knew we were going in a dark place. Maybe there's no power. There's, you know. There are not all, you know, th these things that make life easy. A lot of picture, you know, many pictures came, negative pictures came in my mind. But I want to give glory to the name of the Lord because believers, most of the time God cha causes change in our lives for our own benefit. Amen? For our own benefit. So when we reached Fort Porto, actually it was even very, very better than the place we were staying here. Amen? It is very good. The people were very welcoming. The, the picture that I had was so different. Because people were saying a lot of things. You know, there, when you go there, people change into dogs. Amen. <laughs> people change into what? So I was. But when we went there, believers, that is the place I got born again from. I got, actually, I got born again from Fort Porto. In a very miraculous way. Amen. A neighbor, there was a, a girl who was a neighbor, and I remember she was in Chebambe. Chebambe. Uh, it was holiday. So when we, she had run mad, she, she was sick in her head. She had run crazy. And then the moment we came, she came and you know, immediately befriended us. Had a lot of words. Talking. She was talking a lot of things. And then on Sunday, she invited me to our church. So I went and told my dad that, you know, I want to go to church. Do you know the place? No, I've gotten a, a, a friend. Yeah, how comes you have gotten a friend so easily like that? But anyway, he allowed me. So we went to church. It was the first time I entered. It wasn't actually the first time because I always bypassed churches. There was a Pentecostal church in Nakawa. somewhere is over in Naguru up there. I mean, community hall, around community hall. And my uncle stayed in Nakawa. So whenever we used to come, there are times when we used to pass via there. So... It wasn't really the first time, but this time she took me to church. And when we went to church, believers, on that very Sunday, I got born again. I even don't know how I got up from the chair. When they asked for people to get born again, the way I got born again was even so, you know, so funny. Because me, I got born again because I wanted to please my dad. My dad always, you know, told us as girls, you know, girls are supposed to be good. Amen. You have to be good, have very good company and whatever. So, me, I got born again because I knew getting born again is to be a good person. To be a very lovable person, a well-disciplined person. So, I just got born again. Let me get born again. When I go back home, I'll tell my dad that I'm born again. 
And we thank God because for him he was a liberal person. Amen? He was liberal. Uh, praise Jesus. So when I told him, he said, okay, if you think it's the best place for you, then it's fine. That's how I got born again. Just like that, just playfully, jokingly. But I want to give glory to the name of the Lord because God loved me so much. In the first days that I got born again, it was the time that I started seeing miracles, dreams. Amen? Things, you see things and things would happen. And I thank God that, you know, I was established in salvation. It was, and this came about because there was a change that had to take place in my life. Maybe if I had remained here, I wouldn't have gotten born again. Amen? So, people usually resist change. Many times people don't want change. As human beings, we, we, you know, we love stability. We always love to stay in one point of life. We want to remain you know, my, the, the way we are. Most of the times people want to remain the way they are. Praise Jesus. So, we must learn how to function. The Lord wants us to learn how to function and to be successful. Amen? In all seasons. Praise Jesus. In all season. Amen. Let's look at the book of Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verses 27. This was a time of the, the Egyptian, I mean the, the Israelites. Uh, maybe I will paraphrase then we shall read uh, from Deuteronomy. Amen. But let me paraphrase from how it started from. I know we, most of us know, you know, the history of the Israelites. How they went into captivity. They found themselves actually in, in captivity in Egypt. Amen. They had gone to look for food. There was a famine. And behold, because uh, their, their brother Joseph was sold into captivity, was sold into Egypt, God blessed him from there. Amen. His purpose was fulfilled actually in Egypt. Then the famine came and then the family of, Dave, of of Joseph had to come from, you know, Canaan, come to Egypt to seek, you know, food. So with that, they found um, uh, Joseph. Of course, he was promoted. He was a man, a, a man of status. God had elevated him. God had fulfilled his dream. And behold, that's how they 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 came to dwell in the land of Egypt. Amen. God blessed them with a very, you know, good, the best part of Egypt, the land of Goshen. So they stayed there and for a long time, praise Jesus. So time came because of the heavy burdens, the, the, the pharaoh of, you know, of um, the, uh, the, the leaders or the king or the pharaoh, they died. Those who knew, the, I mean, who knew Joseph, who knew the family of Joseph, they all died. So that means that history had, had died and the leaders or the king that was there, the pharaoh that was there at that time did not know the history of the children of Israel. So they became afraid because the Israelites started growing in number. So the number of the Israelites, you know, scared the Egyptians. Because they knew that this Israel, these Jews might take us over, might take over us. So with that, they turned them into slaves. And every burden were placed upon them. They would make bricks. So it was too much for them until they lifted up their voice and cried out unto God. And behold, God, you know, sent a rescuer. Amen. He sent Moses. And Moses' story also is another one. Amen. We are not going to go in there. We, know, we knew Moses grew up from the palace. Amen. Adapted by, you know, the, the daughter of Pharaoh. He grew up in the palace and he killed, you know, one of the Egyptians and he was implicated. So he had to run away for, because of his life, to save his life. When he ran away to the land of Midian, he, he stayed there. And yet God was training him because there was already a call upon, of God upon Moses' life. So the children of Israel, because of the heavy tasks that were upon them, they're the ones who used to make the bricks, the pyramids. And many if you learned about the pyramids, they're the ones you know who used to make, you know, these pyramids. The, it was a heavy burden upon them. 
until they lifted up their voice unto God. Because still they knew their God. When the Lord heard their cry, he sent Moses, Moses who had run into exile. So behold, Moses came back. He was now eight years. He had gone when he was 40, he stayed for 40 years. That, was, that, that is also another sermon, praise Jesus. And then God had to bring him back to rescue the children of Israel. So when the children of Israel were rescued on their way, a lot of things happened. They were not an easy people. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verses 27. Verses 27, the Bible says, And ye murmured in your tents and said, Now the children of, of Israel, you know, as they were going to the land, to the promised land, of course they passed through the wilderness. And truly the wilderness is not something easy. So there are a lot of complaints. They were resisting the change. And yet the change that God had, was causing in their lives, believers, was to bring deliverance unto them. So in most cases, the reason why people fear change, because in most cases, sometimes change, you know, has a lot of trials. Sometimes change is, is not over for you to reach the very expected end that God has planned for you. So the same applies to the children of Israel. They reached in the wilderness and it wasn't really easy. They faced a lot of challenges. They faced thirst. Remember in the wilderness there's no water. There was thirst. There was not enough food. In Egypt even though they were slaves but at least they had something to eat. But on their way to change, hallelujah, on their way to destiny, amen, because God brings change, believers, just to, to transit us to destiny, to our destination. So the Bible says they grumbled, they murmured. So here the Bible says, and ye murmured in your tents and said, because the Lord hated us, he has brought us out from the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. On your way as God in tra is transiting you to one place to another. Actually change is getting you from one point to another point. But in between there, there are a lot of trials. There are a lot of tests. There are a lot of questions. There are a lot of discouragements. It, it, you know, it happened to the children of Israel. So they murmured a lot. They grumbled a lot, which, you know, of course, God was not happy with it. But what was it? The thing was, you know, they were not, they were fearing change. They, they, were, they did not welcome. And when you start, you know, fighting God's hand upon your life, when you start fighting, you know, God is direction. Because at this time, it's like God is the one in the driving seat, driving you to your destination. But most of the time we fight him. So they murmured, they grumbled, they even reached an extent of saying, God, does it mean that, you know, there was no food in Egypt to bring us here to kill us? So a lot of things happens, amen? So yet he is repositioning us. There are things you cannot get where you are. These children of Israel had a promise upon their lives. And this promise could not be fulfilled in the land of captivity. There are times when God tells you move from this place and go to this place. Believe us, it's for a reason. However much you are comfortable in this one place. If God has told you to go, move. Amen? Move. Maybe it might, you, you know, it might be a place that is like full of darkness. You even know you are not aware. You don't know where you are going. You don't know what is on the other side, even if God has said so. But God wants us. There are certain things, believers, you cannot attain. There are certain things you cannot get when you are in that position that you are. So when God tells you to move, move. Amen? We have a good example of Abraham. The Lord called him from the land of his fathers and told him, you know, I want you to go to Canaan. 
The land that he had never known. Actually, he moved, he even didn't know the direction when he was still in his father's house. Abraham had faith. He moved. Amen? He moved. And the fulfillment, yes, of his life, believers, happened when he was moving. Praise Jesus. So God wants to strategically position you so that you will be able to access things that you could never get in that place that you are in. There are things you will never get in that place that you are in. And God wants you to move. It's not only places, but believers, it's even in your life. Maybe there are certain things that you are involved in and God wants you to let go, let them go and, you know, let God. There's also a story of a man who, you know, used to jog every morning. And the place, the area he jogged from was a cliff, like it was sort of uh, a valley, amen, or a cliff, yes. Is it a cliff or something? Praise the Lord. There was like a valley, there was a ditch. So one time as he was running, because it had rained, he slid. And then he fell over. As he was falling, he held on the grass. There was a grass, you know, a bunch of grass that was up. So he fell. And his feet, his legs were just hanging. Then he cried out unto the Lord. And the Lord told him, let go. He had, he had the voice of the Lord telling him, let go. And when God told him to let go, he looked down and he saw the moment I let go, I'm going to fall in down there in this ditch and I'm dead. But the voice was saying, let go. Praise Jesus. There are times when God tells us to let go of certain things. There are certain things that you need to change in your life. Reflect inside your life. What are the things that you think are hindering you? The children of Israel had a problem. They feared change, but, you know, as they were moving, it is very bad, you know, to move when you still have, you know, what you left behind. When you still have the habits you left behind. When you still have the attitude, amen, you left behind. Or the attitudes that you had when you are in this very position and you move with them. There are certain things that God wants us to let go if we are to make it in this life. So the Bible says that these people grumbled. They grumbled and told God, Amen. Is it He has brought us, you know, out of the land of Egypt to deliver us? Actually, as they were going, they also met other nations. In this case, there were the Amorites. These were fierce people. They were strong people. So they, the, the Israelites knew, the Jews, they, they knew that now they were gone. Many times on our way to our destination, in, in this time of change, amen, in this time of responding to change, there are a lot of, you know, grumblings. There are a lot of questions that people have. I always hear people, some people say that uh, before I was born again, all these things were not happening. But why is it that these things are happening? Believers. Amen? Crumbling. Hallelujah. So, I just want to tell you, wherever there's change in your life, God just wants to strategically position you to the very place that, you know, there are certain things, there are a lot of things that people have attained from my ministries. Isn't it? God brought us all the way from wherever we are. In most cases, we used to resist. Amen? But when you came to I am, there are certain things you have attained that, you know, you, 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 you may not have gotten from the other side. So change. Change is a fact of life. You can't resist change. Praise Jesus. You cannot resist change. So let us allow change. Because change is usually for our own benefit. Let's look at Jesus Christ plus his disciples. The disciples also pass through, you know, a situation like, like that. Like the children of Israel. Coming from one place, 
crossing over to the other place. In the book of Luke chapter 8 and verses 22. Let's begin from verses 22. The Bible says in verses 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. Let's go over to the other side. Changing position. Moving to the, from the place that they were. There was a mission of course that they had performed. Amen. And now it was time for them to cross over to the other side. Because there was still work on the other side to do. There was still an accomplishment for them to, you know, to, to accomplish on the other side. So Bible tells us, Jesus said, and in verses 22, amen, and now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, let us go over on the other side of the lake and they launched, amen. The Lord wants us to launch forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and there came a came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water, and were in jeopardy, praise the name of the Lord, or in danger. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Amen, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and there was a calm. Amen. Verses 25. And he said unto them, where is your faith? In this time of change, faith, believers, is a requirement. Praise Jesus. In this time of, you know, transition, there are a lot of things. I remember when we were transiting, yes, from Kampala and we were going to Fort Porter. Those days, the road was really too bad. So the roads alone were a discouragement. <laughs> Amen? The roads alone at that time. The roads were in a very sorry state in the 80s. The roads were really in a very sorry state. It had even rained. We almost slept on the way. You know, things were, it wasn't easy. So the time of change, there are a lot of hurdles for us, you know, to jump over. Amen? There are a lot of hurdles to jump over. But this doesn't mean that God is not with you. So the Bible tells us, and he, in verses 25, and he said, they woke him up. He, he fell asleep. And they woke him up. And he said unto them, where is your faith? And they, be, and they being afraid, wondered, saying, amen, one to another, what manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds, hallelujah, and the water, and they obey him. He commands the winds. Believe it is only Jesus that, that can command the wind, the storm in your life. Jesus needed to position his apostolic team. He needed to reposition them. Hallelujah. So that, you know, they could minister to a need in another city. And one thing that I've come to realize, wherever God, you know, takes you from one place to another, he wants, there's a mandate upon your life. He wants us believers to, you know, to minister. There's a need somewhere. It takes to a place because there's a need. And it is you to fulfill it. The Lord brought, you know, the, the online church. The way God connected you to I Am Ministries, it's because there's a need you have to fulfill. The believers in I Am Ministries, you came to I Am Ministries because that was a change. Amen. In your life. So there's a need. That cause God requires us. Amen. To fulfill. The children of Israel transited from Egypt, believers, to Canaan. Amen. Why? Because there was a need. They had to fulfill as the chosen children of God. Praise Jesus. So he knew, Jesus knew that they could not reach that need where they were. 
they could not reach that need. Their present position was ineffective. The position that they were in, believers, was not suitable. It was ineffective for, the, you know, for that need. That's why change is required. There are certain things you need to let go. Reposition yourself. People fear venturing into things. Even when God has spoken. Even when you know that there is a confirmation. People fear. You fear venturing into a business. Because you think since everybody is there, there is a lot of competition. People fear change. You come with a lot of excuses. And yet God has spoken. Venture in. There is a need. Just go. The hand of the Lord is with you. Amen. He knows that when you venture, then you know the, the, the purpose will be fulfilled. Where you are, it is impossible. Hallelujah. Your present position, your present position, believers, is ineffective. Come out from wherever you are, come out from wherever you're hiding. Hallelujah. Come out, go with God. Amen. So the Bible tells us the children of Israel. <laughs> we are going back to Deuteronomy. Do you know because of the grumbling they spent in the wilderness alone? Is it around 40, almost 43 years in the wilderness? Something that was supposed to take them something like 11 days. Grumbling. Why? Because they fear change. Change usually makes you, you know, look back like the wife of Lot. And wherever you look back, it becomes a problem. The moment you look back, you remain static. Amen? You remain a pillar of salt. Praise the name of the Lord. So, your present position when God says, do this, do it. When he says, you know, I want you, you know, to do something, that's, that's also change. Amen? I want you to do something for me. You could be in the same position, in the same church, but there's a change God wants to, to cause within your life. And there's some things that you have to let go. Because if you don't, then it will be difficult for God to unveil, to fulfill. Amen? To fulfill what, you know, you are planned for. So in order for them, the disciples, in order for the disciples to be in a place of effectiveness, they would have to cross a sea and pass through a storm. The other time we were talking that tests, believers, these are building blocks to build you. Because God will never, you know, avail unto you what belongs to you when you are not ready for it. When you are not mature enough to handle it. So the, 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 the apostolic team, Jesus' apostolic team, the disciples, had to pass through a storm. Amen. They had to pass through a storm because in that storm, believers, you see God. That's why they wondered and asked themselves, but what manner, what manner of man is this? Who even speaks to the storm? I just want to tell you in the time of, because the Bible tells us that when Jesus told them to cross on the other side, Jesus was with them in the boat, but Jesus fell asleep. And they tried to wake him up. It didn't wake up. It did not wake up immediately. It was until they insisted and persisted that Jesus Christ woke up. In our walk, believers, to the other side of our life, there's insisting, there's persisting, there's moving on, there's pushing. Even in the storm, because the storm will always be there. I've said that the storm is always for our own benefit. So Jesus allowed the storm because he knew he's God. He was God in human, but he was 100% human, but he was still 100% God. So he knew that this was 
He allowed this to take place. So the disciples were almost giving up. The disciples, I know they grumbled, Jesus, where are you? You are, you know, you are just sleeping. Where are you? You are not even answering us. Like a lot of us, us have a lot of questions. We are like Jesus, but I've prayed and God is not answering me. Believers, Jesus is with you in the boat. He is with you in this boat of life. I prayed, I have fasted, but God, where are you? You are not, you know, hearing. Amen? A lot of, a lot, lot, lot of grumblings. So the disciples, but God is so merciful. Bible tells us that, you know, he commanded. So in this time, rather than believers wasting our time in grumbling and seeking questions, amen, one thing you have to know as long as I'm with the Lord, I'm going to pass through it. Praise Jesus. As long as we are with him, we are going to pass through it. Amen. So these people, they were in jeopardy and they were, you know, they were in real challenges. The challenges they were passing through the storm, it was real. The Israelites, believers, the challenges they were passing through was real. Amen. It, it's real. It's really painful. It is true. You are passing through it. It is so real. Amen. But what God, you, you know, is, is trying to tell you here that I want you to focus on me. Crossing over to the other side, believers, if you don't focus on God and try focusing on other, other things, mm -mm, you may not make it. We thank God that the apostolic team, you know, they focus on Jesus. Yes, the storm was there, but Jesus, they tried work, waking him up. Amen. And they saying, and they came to him and awoke him saying, Master, Master, we perish. Believers, that's what we should do in these times. Our focus should be the Lord. When your focus becomes the storm, because by the time they, start, they, they called Master, Master, they had struggled. There are many times we try fighting on our own. And then we remember Jesus after maybe we, are, we have now had injuries. Remember the Lord after you've been injured. Because the Bible tells us that but as they said, they, they, Jesus, he fell asleep and they came down the lake. Uh, yes, down. As, and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy and they came to him hallelujah and they came to him and i woke master master we perish but i know before they even called jesus christ there was fear amen there was fear then they remember Jesus Christ was in the boat. Master, master, hold on unto the Lord. In this time of change, amen, hold on. It is true. It's, it was danger. It is true. It was a real challenge. It is true we pass through challenges. But focus on Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell yourself, focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. It is true, it was a real obstacle to their mission. There are a lot of obstacles we meet. Amen? In this transition, changing from one place to another. Many obstacles, you are going to meet a lot of obstacles. But hold on unto Jesus. Because when your focus is on Jesus Christ, you even, you know, shorten the time. Do you know you shorten the time? Because that shows maturity. Whatever you are passing through and you say, no, Jesus, Jesus, I know I'm passing through this. Jesus, there's no any other place I'm going to. You are the one I'm holding on to. You shorten the time. You shorten the distance. But when you keep on grumbling, God will watch. Amen? 
until you remember him. Amen. So, many times following God's will does not take us down the easy road. Many times. It doesn't really take us you know, down. It, is, it isn't easy. But one thing I want you to know is you need to remember that if God helped you one time, because I do believe as Christians, from the time we got born again, at least we have a testimony. In this time, remember that the God who did it the other time is the same God who can still do it today. The God who delivered me from the hands of the enemy is the same God who can deliver me from this situation. Let what God has done unto you in the past, at least the testimonies that you hear from, the, from believers, let them push you forth, draw you closer unto God. Praise Jesus. Amen. We are passing through the storm. Hallelujah. Change. Accept change. The storm is not your, destina your destination, but the storm is the path to your destination. Amen. Whatever challenge that you are passing through, that's not your destination. That is not where you are supposed to stop. Amen. You are just going through it. Hallelujah. You are just going through it. God has not forgotten you in the storm. The Lord has not forgotten you. You are still going somewhere. Know that you are still going somewhere. Even if you have reached that place whereby you feel stuck, you are still going somewhere. Hallelujah. One thing that you don't have to forget is you still have divine purpose. There's still God's divine purpose upon your life. Amen. So when you are led, you know, by, by situations, you, especially situations that we cannot handle, remember that Jesus will always show up. He will show up. The situation of the storm, it wasn't easy. But we want to give glory to God. God will always show up. It is like a toddler, a young child learning how to walk. Many times, you know, this child, when they are just beginning to walk, sometimes they, they feel shy when the parents are around. But when you hide somewhere, you know, you see them trying to walk. Amen? So, and when they walk, usually, you know, they just walk anyhow. As a, par a parent, of course, you come behind them and rescue them, especially when they are going maybe to fall down in a, in a, in a dangerous place. Amen? You, you come and rescue them, get hold of them. The same applies to God. Even as we are passing through, you know, this storm, He is there with us. He will for sure show up. Hallelujah. He is going to show up. No matter what in your life, God is going to show up because He is prepared to invest in us. Amen. He's prepared to invest in us the resources necessary to meet that challenge. Amen. Is there there are resources in us? What are these resources? Patience. Amen. The resources, the strength to move on. God is prepared to avail all these resources unto us. Amen. Whatever is necessary for you to meet the challenge. That is if you avail him, if you allow him. Amen. If you allow him, he has everything it takes, by the way, for you to pass through what you are, you know what you are going through. He has all the resources you need. He has all the requirements, all the equipments. It's the Lord who equips us for war. He, he equips us for the challenges. He does not bring the challenges, you know, and throws them at you. No, he first equips us. That's the working. That's why the Spirit of the Lord is available. Amen. Equips us. Hallelujah. So, 
We see here that the trial did not come to master, to master the children of Israel or even the apostolic team. But believers, these trials come so that we master them. Never allow a trial to master you, a trial to be your master. Do you know when a trial is your master? <laughs> even a person a hundred meters away from you will know that you are passing through a trial. It will be all over you because it's the one reigning. It's ruling you. It's your master. It's directing you. It's the one that makes you, 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 know, you, you get that attitude. Everything they tell you, you, you know, you be, it becomes so personal. You show attitude, you know. That means the situation is your master. But in this time of change, do not allow any situation, any storm to be your master. What we have to do is to master. Master the storm. Learn to master the storm. Hallelujah. What I mean, be the master of the storm. Do not allow the, the storm to be your master. Master it. Be the boss of, the, of that storm. Amen. You will nullify it. It will become empty. It will become weak. You know, many times when you show something or when you show someone that you are weak, amen, they, you know, they, they, they which word should I use? When somebody, you know, when you show somebody that, you know, you are weak, they, they will become your master. They will get opportunity, actually, they will take opportunity. But when you show them that, my dear, amen, they will run away. When you show them your stand, when you show them that you are firm, they will disappear. So when you start showing a situation or a storm that, you know, uh, it's too much. Uh, when you start those things that uh, is too much, uh, what I'm passing through is really too much, then you are only letting, giving way to that problem, to take control of you, to take charge of you. But do not allow it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So the trials that come, believers, they come, hallelujah, to mature us. Let any trial come to mature. I've said this at this in most of my sermons. Amen. I talk about this because I know people are passing through situations. And challenges are challenging them. Be the challenger of your challenges. Don't allow challenges to challenge you. Because we, we overcame. Those, are in, those who are in Christ overcame the world. And this is the victory that you know, overcomes the world. Praise the name of the Lord, even our faith. We overcame the world. Hallelujah. In verses 25, yes, verses 25, the Bible says, And he said unto them, Where is your faith? Where is your faith in whatever you are passing through? Many times, believers, we miss it in, the, in the, this time of change, you know. Because we know, we do not, because we do not know where we are going, hallelujah, we begin, believers, to give up. But I just want to tell you, do not give up. This is a place where people are and they do not know what will happen next. I tell you, Jesus Christ is with you. He knows what is going to happen next. Hallelujah. Just get sight of, have faith, get sight of, you know, faith is having hope, having, seeing where you are going before you have seen it physically. Praise the name of the Lord. So, we should not lose hope. Amen. Many times we forget who we are when we are in that place. You forget that you are a child of God. We forget, you know, who is on board with us. Amen. We forget that what we forget what God said about us. When we are in that time of crossing over or going to the another the, the other positive place that God has called us to, you know, to to go. 
You forget the children of Israel forgot who they were. They forgot that they were the chosen, you know, the chosen race. They forgot that out of them was going to, you know, to come salvation. They forgot that they were with this great big God, the I am who I am. They forgot the hand of God. They saw the hand of God in Egypt. They, through the plagues that God, you know, had sent forth in Egypt. They saw the hand of the Lord when God, you know, used Moses to, you know, he lifted up his rod. And the sea, the Red Sea parted. Just imagine what, you know, what a miracle that was. They saw all that. So many times in this place, you know, the enemy makes you forget. You forget that you're a child of God. You forget that you are the chosen one. Amen. You forget that you are more than a conqueror. That's what it does. Even the disciples themselves, they had forgotten. <laughs> they had forgotten that who they were. They had even actually even forgotten the master. They only remembered him afterwards. You forget about the promises upon your life. You forget ab about the, the, you know, the, 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 the prophecies that God has declared upon your life. You easily forget it. And Jesus Christ is asking, where is your faith in this time? Where is your faith? When you look at the work of the children of Israel, these people forgot their identity. In this place, people forget their identity. Praise Jesus. You forget. You forget who you are. Hallelujah. So, believers, I just want to, you know, to encourage someone. You are passing through this time of change or the time of transition. I just want to tell you that it's not your destination. That is not the end of you. There are better things yet to come. You have better things yet to come. Do not mind about who has gone before you. Mm -mm. That doesn't matter. What matters the most is the Lord with you. Is the hand of the Lord with you. Is Jesus with you in the boat. Praise Jesus. Is Jesus with you in the boat. Amen. So we, we must not forget that in the darkness. Amen. When we are in the darkness. When we are in that place of confusion, that place of uncertainty. Do not forget what God promised, spoke upon, you know, upon your life. Maybe God gave you a word in the Bible and he was really speaking to you. Maybe through the woman of God. Amen. God gave you a word. Do not forget. Amen. In the darkness, do not forget the promise of God in your life. What God promised us in the light, it will for sure come to pass. It will come to pass. It doesn't matter. Even when the storm has overwhelmed you, it doesn't matter. Because he never said we would not have challenges. One thing when you are going through this situation, know that God actually he has all the promises. But he had never promised us that he, we will never go through these challenges. But one thing he promised, that even in these challenges, even in this storm, is going to be with us. Hallelujah. He's crossing over. We are not alone. We are not alone. 
actually what causes a lot of these uncertainties what causes a lot of doubt is because when people reach a place and they think that they are alone they are alone hallelujah they, they lose it I just want to tell you that we are not alone. Hallelujah. Our destiny, amen, is greater than our storm. So hold on. Your destiny, your tomorrow is greater than your now. Hallelujah. It is great. A very good example is Jesus Christ. You know, when he was in, on his way to, uh, to the crucifixion. Believers, it wasn't easy. But it was a change. It was a transition. He was being transformed. Hallelujah. His death, believers, he was now being transformed to glory, to victory. But it wasn't easy. But one thing, know that you are not alone. Amen. When we look at, you know, Moses's, Moses chained the church in the wilderness telling them that in order for them to inherit their promise, they will have to cross over. To cross over, for them to inherit the promise, it had to be a crossover. It had to, to be a repositioning. Amen. So as we are winding up, as long as we see ourselves, we continue seeing ourselves as, you know, Egyptian slaves, even when we are crossing over, you will remain a slave. But when you are crossing over and you see yourself, you know, as, you know, a child of God, just going into their destination, that's where you will be. Many times as Christians, in this place, we continue seeing ourselves as failures. You are not a failure. You are not. In this moment of crossover, let me tell you, whatever you see yourself is what is going to determine the results. That is what is going to determine the results. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in the name of Jesus Christ, let Egypt remain behind. The Egyptians had left Egypt. Amen. The Israelites had left Egypt, but Egypt was still in them. Most of the challenges, the reason why we stay in these challenges is because we come out of the world. Amen. Come to Christ, but come with the world. We come together with the world inside us. Let the world behind. Amen. And move on with another world. The world of Christ, the world of God. And we are going to overcome in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You are not a loser. You are better than what you think you are. You are not a loser. Amen. Whatever mistake that held you back, let it go. Let it go. Amen. If you have been a grumbler, if you have been asking questions, let it go. God is a God who always gives us a second chance. So whatever change you are passing through, allow it. Allow it. When you allow it, you will actually shorten it. But when you, dis when you disagree with it, you are only prolonging your pain. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So I just want to give glory to the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I thank God so very much. And I believe that somebody passing through whatever storm, accept the change. I mean whatever change that is in your life, accept it. Because change, you cannot be, you know, effective where you are just allow change so that you meet a need on the other side of your life there's a need god wants to prosper you god wants to change you so that you change other people god wants to make you a better person so that you know there's a need because there's a need everything there's a need 
God wants to prosper you, not for yourself. Why? Because there is a need. There are destitute people out there. There are people who need help and God wants to use you. Hallelujah. So he wants to make you pass through all this so that you are able to be qualified, that you, so that you are qualified to be the very person that he wants to use to cause a change in this world, a change in your family, a change in your neighborhood, a change in this nation, a change to the continents, and God wants to use you. So accept any change in your life. Amen? Even if it involves pain, focus on God. He's going to wake up. Jesus is not sleeping. He's aware. Amen? He's aware. He knows that, you know, you are passing through that, whatever you're passing through. And he's going to wake up and silence the storm. Because you have, there's a need. He needs you. He wants to work in partnership with you to fulfill Amen. His mandate on this earth. So we want to give glory to the name of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Let us just have a short prayer. Father, we want to thank you, Lord. We honor your name. We glorify your name. Thou art mighty. Thou art holy. The Lord, oh my Father, who silences storms, oh my Father. You are the God, oh my Father, who silences the voice of storms in our lives. The voice of challenges in our lives. Every jeopardy, Lord, in our lives. This voice of dangers, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, whatever hurdles that the enemy places, oh God, even as we cross over to the other side, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are going to focus on you in Jesus' mighty name. Because we know, Lord, you are not a sleeper. But behold, oh mighty Father, Lord, you are so aware, oh my Father, what we are passing through. Therefore, Lord, we pray, Spirit of the living God, we pray that you give us, oh my Father, Lord, the power, oh my King, yes, the ability. Lord, to pass through, to cross over. It is true, Father, Lord, you said that you never promise that we shall never have challenges. But Lord, Almighty oh, Father, you promise that even in these challenges, oh God, you are going to be with us in Jesus' mighty name. We call upon you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Whatever challenges that the believers are passing through, whatever challenges that the online, whoever is watching is passing through, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we send the anointing that breaks the yoke. We we send no matter father lord behold yes the presence of the lord for lord behold you promise that you send us the comforter the helper in the name of jesus christ we call upon you spirit of the lord open our eyes that we may behold your presence with us many times in challenges oh my father lord we tend to forget that you are with us many times in times of challenges in times of change oh my father we tend to forget oh god what behold you did for us lord oh mighty father we tend to forget the testimony. But Lord, we pray, oh my King, that oh my Father, behold, may we be aware, Lord, that Lord, oh my King, oh God, you are a God who does great and mighty things. You are a God, nothing, Lord, is impossible with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, therefore, Lord, I pray, Lord, Lord, I pray for faith. Like, oh my King, Lord, you woke up, oh my Father, when the disciples, oh my King, after the great storm, oh my King, Father, Lord, they woke you up, Master, Master, Master Lord, we call upon you, Lord. Tonight, Master, Master Jesus, Lord, we call upon you, Lord. May you calm every storm, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that may you calm, oh my King, every storm. As, oh my King, we cross over. As, Lord, we change position, Lord, to fulfill a mandate on the other side. We want to thank you, Holy Spirit. We honor and glorify your name in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Father Lord, we thank you. We worship and magnify your name because it is done in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We just want to give glory to the name of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that the message has really, you know, helped you because I do know that people are passing, people are really passing through, you know, whatever you're passing through, it's for your own good. It's a change. God just wants, you know, to strategically position you in a place whereby you know is going to give you equip you amen that you may fulfill a need in that destination that is taking you amen so just may the peace of the lord be with you 
May you know the goodness of the Lord be with you. May the storm be calmed in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray that the blood of the Lamb, yes, speak better words on your behalf. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being there. We love you. Greetings from our mom, Prophetess Agnes Emmanuel Avako. She sends her love and greetings unto you. Shalom, shalom. Till tomorrow, the same time. Amen. God bless you.